In this video, I will talk about straw-fired gasifiers. I am addressing this topic because I am thinking about creating a demonstration straw-fired gasifier for several tens of kilowatts of power, I think up to 100 kilowatts in electricity, for the military generators, which, thank God, are abundant. Many customers of my designs use these kinds of electricity generators because of their low price. Even now there are a lot of them on sale. There are models for 1, 2.5, 4, 8, 12, 32, and 60 kilowatts. Considering that a gasifier is flexible and can deliver gas from 10 to 100% of its capacity, I think I will develop, test, and show one omnipurpose straw fired gasifier for 8 and 12 kilowatts military electrical stations, if nothing gets in the way. Although if we are talking about farmers, they will probably need 100 kilowatts power plants. A military 60 kilowatts generator for a few thousand dollars is exactly what they need. It has a well-known engine from ZIL trucks. Historically, straw was simply burned in the fields. I think it is burned now, too. Some people crush straw and spread it back over the field so it can decompose and become fertilizer. But that takes from 5 to 10 years. Straw's fodder is only suitable for ruminants. Animals with one stomach, such as pigs, cannot digest straw. Cow herds were slaughtered back in the 90s, and this threw the country's animal farming with its former networks of meat processing plants back by 100 years, so almost all dairy products today are made from imported dried milk. From the above, we can see that there is a lot of straw left, so it mostly either rots in bales or is burnt directly in the fields. There is an incredible amount of straw in the world, rice straw, flax straw, wheat straw, and many more. As always, the straw production leader is China. 40% of the world's straw is produced there. Today, this figure is about 1 billion tons per year. If you turn it into electricity and heat with gasifiers, you get a figure of about a trillion kilowatts of electricity and two and a half trillion kilowatts of heat. In the 1990s, China launched a state program of building gasifiers in villages where peasant households received gas through a pipeline from a common gasifier. The gas was made from agricultural waste, including straw. Peasants delivered straw, corn stalks, sunflower stalks, rice husks, and other things to a gasifier, and received gas in return. The Chinese decided to focus on the pyrolysis of straw to get gas for households and carbon. Besides, the gas was sold in the villages at gas stations. Those who want to read this in-depth study with figures can click on the link to the article in the description below the video. It looked like this. A gasifier or pyrolysis plant was built to produce illuminating gas, as had been done more than a hundred years before. Several hundred peasant households brought straw to this plant and received piped gas to their houses in return. While implementing this program, the Chinese faced difficulties ranging from wet fuel to the laziness of local farmers, but some of the introduced gasifiers have shown success. It is known that two tons of straw is produced per each ton of grain. According to old Soviet calculations, one hectare of wheat produces 1,500 kilograms of straw. The calorific value of straw is close to that of wood and from just over 1 kilogram of straw 1 kilowatt of electricity and 2.5 kilowatts of heat can be produced. Gasification yields 2.3 cubic meters of gas out of 1 kilogram of straw with 20% moisture. Pine chips of the same moisture content produce about 2.2 cubic meters of gas. Straw is about 5% less carbon. Its ash content is 4 to 7 times higher than that of wood chips, from 4 to 7% of ash content versus 1% in wood chips, so for 1 kilowatt of electricity, you need to gasify a little more than a kilogram of straw. Straw is less calorific than wood by about 15%. According to USSR estimations, 1 hectare of wheat field yields a little less than 1 and a half megawatts of electricity in the form of gasified straw. In the West, for example, in Denmark, 
building a decentralized system of boiler plants on straw was started back in the 80s. At first, straw was baled, delivered to the stations, and then burned in bales, or unbaled on straw cutters. There is a problem with burning of straw. When burning straw, chlorine and alkali contained in the gas leads to the formation of salt and potassium chloride. These very aggressive substances corrode equipment, especially at high temperatures. Therefore, boilers should be made of special steel, which is expensive. For example, one kilogram of heat and corrosion-resistant stainless steel in the form of pipes costs almost $15 today. Just getting heat is important but not as important as getting both electricity and heat from straw. A 6 megawatt of electricity straw-fired gasifier was even built which is shown in the photo. I should also mention another straw gasifier fighter best created in Manitoba, Canada. One-ton straw bales were taken to this facility, then they were cut on a conveyor belt, and then the straw was fed into the gasifier. There are various, including fluidized bed, gasifiers on straw all over the world, but they are too expensive for our realities and require a state program and funding. So, they are not suitable for an average private farmer. A farmer needs a small, cheap, and reliable gasifier. There is very little information about such devices because gasification of straw is not a simple matter. During combustion, straw is bloated in half of its volume. This is the main problem of gasification. Because straw combusts rapidly, domes form inside the fuel layer, and the process breaks down. Therefore, a special gasifier should be designed for straw. What I managed to find, and what has survived to our time, was around 10 Soviet patents on straw gasification and several working devices produced before World War II. The first attempt to gasify straw was made in the USSR in 1935 at the Leningrad Industrial Institute. At that time, if our ancestors are to be believed, there was no research on straw gasification in the world. And it took two years to make a mobile power plant on straw. The project started in 1935 and only in 1937 did engineers manage to make a working device. You can see the link to the corresponding brochure in the description under the video. There were several variants of straw gasifiers on mobile platforms. At that time, it was necessary to get electricity directly in the field. I liked one of these several variants, where the gasifier had no top lid and straw could be fed directly into its hopper which looked like a 200-liter barrel. The gasifier was well tested and put into production. I think we are going to focus on this model. I assume today it can be made from four fuel barrels in a homemade way. The system can produce up to 100 kilowatts of electricity. If several of these gasifiers are installed together with an automatic feed system, it will increase the electricity produced by connecting more powerful gas piston engines. And it will be inexpensive compared to gigantic plants for tens of millions of dollars. There were also variants of gasifiers on straw briquettes in the USSR. You can now see them. Downdraft straw briquette gasifiers are also made in other countries around the world. These gasifiers did not differ much from ordinary downdraft wood gasifiers. But straw briquetting itself is costly. A year ago, briquetting increased the cost of fuel by 4 cents. Today, due to more expensive electricity, this figure will be twice as high. It is easier to just buy wood chips with delivery instead of briquetting straw because the price will be even lower. If someone is comfortable to work with briquette straw, there are many schemes of such gasifiers. In my opinion, a gasifier on crushed rather than briquette straw would be promising. I am not a farmer, but I understand that if one cubic meter of straw weighs 15 kilograms, it should somehow be baled in the field to be delivered to a warehouse, and then the same bale should be grinded to get straw mesh for a gasifier. In the USSR, there were also variants with feeding bales directly into gasifiers. I reviewed such a patent. But to try to replicate this device, there should be a person willing to make a prototype. I take this opportunity to appeal to viewers who want such a gasifier. We can try to replicate it. 
I've made a suggestion. Now it's your turn to write me. My WhatsApp is in the description under the video.